May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are giving thanks today for the life of Thomas Ken, who is the author of the lyrics of the open hymn, including, which is why we sang it, including, of course, the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thomas Ken, it seems to me, in the annals of Christian history, is the epitome of the, I think, wise um, saying, it is better to be faithful than to be right. Mm -hmm. And often, more often than we would like to admit, that actually could be a choice, particularly people who have to deal with very complicated ethical decisions, have to work in that was Ken, in the sense that Ken, on the one hand, was a man of extraordinary piety, uh, chaplain to King Charles II. He was very bold and unafraid, so that when King Charles II literally wanted to house his mistress in Thomas Ken's lodgings, <coughs> he flatly refused. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in fact, uh, really in one, the admiration of Charles II for his stand. But then that, that same kind of internal moral compass also caused him to side with the non-jurors in terms of the supremacy of the Church of England, and because um, he did not want to give the Roman Catholic Church that kind of credibility, as well as the Puritans. He did not like either of those parties, uh, something that we who really bristle about the establishment of any particular church would actually be in sympathy, you know, with that kind of resolution. But all of that, and so it's a kind of mixed bag if you look at Ken from, in essence, our perspective. Only history will prove whether we're right or not. But I would say the thing that marks Ken, besides, of course, the famous lyrics of the doxology, is the fact that he was known far and wide, whether you agreed with him or not politically, as a man of extraordinary personal faith. Um, he was a deep man of prayer, all of which get reflected in the poetry that he wrote and in the sermons that he preached. In fact, he was such a famous orator and preacher that in fact people vied for seats in the churches where he was preaching. Uh, and even royalty didn't always get preference. Um, I mean, that's unheard of. And so, you see, that's where the lessons take us. The lessons take us to issues of personal piety, mm -hmm. as opposed to political correctness. The colic praises his courage, and rightly so. <coughs> but the lessons take us to something that is deeper than courage, and that's faithfulness to Jesus. So, just very, very briefly, First of all, the Deuteronomy lesson and the wonderful line of what it means are calling us to understand that the Lord has called you his treasured people. I love that. And it seems to me personal piety comes first out of gratitude for gifts unmerited. That God has called us to be his own, that we belong to him. It is by his free choice as the sovereign Lord to call those who he will. And because that's the case, there is no place of I deserve any of this when we stand before the maker of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why this lesson gets quoted because it seems to me all godly Christian piety has as its foundation that hu the humility that arises of realizing that we have gifts for which we are entirely undeserved. Because that's the case, you see, we can go right to the Philippian lesson and the call to rejoice and to give thanks. Because you see, again, the rejoicing and giving thanks is not a circumstantial requirement so much as it is the fruit out of which we stand because we know we are the recipients of God's unmerited favor. And that that's true regardless of the caliber of our circumstances. 
In fact, quickly moving into the Luke lesson and the Beatitudes, Jesus is pretty clear that faithfulness sometimes puts you in really tough places. And in fact, rejoice when you are persecuted. I mean, he goes that far because that's where faithfulness can take you. <coughs> and that, in fact, was true for Ken. So when I think of Thomas Ken now, and when I listen to the lessons now, what, yes, I'm called to in his example is courage, but more importantly, the kind of devotion to Jesus out of which courage easily arises. And that is, God, I don't deserve, deserve any of this. And yet, by your love and mercy, I and we are your treasured possession. What could be better than that? 